Okay. Uh, the story of the book is, I mean, there's a few ways to put it. It's a love story that um, takes place between this world and the next. That's, the, that's a, short, a short version. A slightly longer version is a, a kind of a newly married couple living in a nice suburban beachside suburb, get a visitor who uh, grew up in the house and wants to spend his final dying days in his childhood bedroom. And uh, he offers them sort of all his possessions in exchange for allowing him to die in their home. Um, they allow it, and uh, that takes an unexpected turn. Oh, that's a really good question. Um, it's interesting how dystopian, it's interesting to me how dystopian um, it's been taken as, because while I was coming up with the version of, that I wanted to write of the afterlife, and I thought of all the different versions that exist out there, um, which are generally, you know, it's either reward or punishment. It's, um, there's always kind of a, a hierarchy and a structure and you know what's happening. You're either, you know, God or the devil. Or, um, and I, you know, and all questions are answered. Um, and, and not only that, every, every afterlife that's ever been conceived, I think, has one thing in common, which is it's eternal. So that is definitely something which um, I wanted to do differently. But uh, when I was actually coming up with the details of the world, I really uh, leaned heavily on, um, on my time living in France and Spain. And so uh, all the kind of dystopian elements were just the kind of the, the vague basic bureaucracies that, um, that people kind of go through over there. I think we forget in Australia how lucky we are to have just a society that just kind of runs well, makes sense. If you go to the RTA or you go to pay your Telstra bill, you don't have to barter. And it doesn't depend on the clerk you get at the other end. Like there's, there are rules, whereas other countries are not. So it's it it may be a weird afterlife but it's also just sort of vaguely european yeah it's a good question i wanted to um have a character who who is not really well read but just has a natural intelligence and you know as when I was telling the story, for instance, of his childhood, um, you know, it's hard sometimes when you want to write about, you know, a large uh, chunk of time. And in, in my case, it's sort of, in this case, it's sort of 18 years. I want to write about his childhood or actually really the first kind of 25 years of his life. Um, and in order to do so, I picked like a very particular lens, which is his encounters with other people's belief systems and structures um, and you see he doesn't need to kind of rely on on religious texts or philosophy or you know literature um, or essayists to have opinions about what he's encountering these are just you know he's just kind of has an inst an instinct a sort of a skeptic kind of a born skeptic and a born skeptic somebody who is skeptical doesn't necessarily need the structure of, of, of an education to critique. It's just, it doesn't smell right to him. And um, yeah, but I mean, the double side of that is, yes, I'm sure it's just my voice as well. I suppose I could have, but yeah, I'm, when I'm writing, I'm just trying to tell a story. I'm, my instincts are, are as a storyteller first and the whole conceit of the book, the whole project was, um, was a story that flips back between um, this world and the next, this life and the next. Um, it was something that came to me literally 20 years ago when I walked out of the movie Magnolia in 1999 
And that, that's a movie that, that jumps from character to character. And I just remember walking out thinking, God, it'd be fun to tell a story in which you go from character to character, but then one of those characters dies and you go back to the other character and then you keep following, you keep going back to uh, the first character who died. And we just sort of flip back and forth. And, um, you know, I think for one, the idea of a ghost story told from the ghost's point of view was something that I wanted to explore. Um, I really like afterlife stories and there are quite a few, but they generally don't go back to earth. Um, they generally like someone dies and you follow them. Um, I, I, yeah, I really wanted to um, explore the two worlds at the same time. And also because I knew that there was going to be later connections between them. I would say that I have multiple impulses as a creative person, as an artist, whatever you want to say. The one impulse is, as I mentioned, uh, is like, I'm a, you know, as a storyteller, I love to tell the story. Another impulse is as, I, I guess, I don't know what the word is, a commentator or, you know, a amateur philosopher. Um, you know, some of my favorite novels are novels in which a character walks around and nothing happens whatsoever. They have like plotless novels uh, in which we are just inside the mind of a character are some of my favorite, yet I'm also really drawn to like uh, heavy, extensive plots. Um, so all these things are happening. It's true if I, if I wasn't going to write a novel I could potentially just imagine writing kind of a book of thoughts or ideas, but I don't enjoy it as much. Like I love creating characters. I love telling stories. I love, um, and the characters that I create uh, are, are thinkers. And that's, um, it's just the type of character that I enjoy uh, interacting with and you know and that's that's kind of the type of people that I enjoy interacting with is people who go through the world you know really trying to understand it and really exploring it um, and talking out ideas and I mean there's a line in my last book which talks about um, well the the quote is something like you know, why, is, why are the characters in Australian novels always so laconic? Because, you know, that's not my experience of people. My experience of people is they never shut up. And, uh, you know, I generally feel like that. I mean, if you think of most people you know really well, you know them, but you know also what they think about the world. You know what they believe about, you know, are they skeptics? Are they religious? Do they, um, are they cynical? Are they optimists? Um, and it's not through behavior that we know this stuff. We know this up through like talking and conversation. Um, so I don't like that kind of thing, which, uh, which really appeals to me to be excluded from the novel. I, um, I, enjoy, I enjoy writing it. I enjoy reading it. And I enjoy um, experiencing it in real life. Um, yeah, this is something that, Writing about the pandemic was something that came up um, sort of as a problem solving exercise for me. I mean, for one, for better or worse, I wrote the pandemic bit in 2019. So I, um, you know, I'd kind of painstakingly researched it and, you know, with no idea that it was gonna just kind of blast across the, our, our lives um, like that. The truth was that Originally, I had this story of, of you know, Angus uh, going to the afterlife and, and, and Gracie and, and Owen left in the house. Um, but for a while, I just had them like moping around the house and I realized that there was nothing much happening. And then this kind of phrase came to me, which was um, apocalypse on earth, revolution in heaven. And I kind of took that as like a brief uh, to write to 
And then, yes, then when I was thinking, okay, well, what kind of apocalypse? Um, and I didn't really, I really didn't want to write about a nuclear war. And I didn't, you know, what else is there? Like asteroid hitting the earth, that's over too quickly. And when I began writing it, we hadn't had a pandemic in like a hundred years. So um, I thought, uh, yeah, I would do that. Um, little did I know it would be something that we're probably quite sick of, <laughs> but it, it's there anyway. Only if it would be appropriate to say that all people are lost souls. Um, you know, it's a pretty, uh, let's say, you could say it's kind of a random selection of like, a, like a random, let's say, let's say it's a randomized trial. Um, and, you know, I feel that most people are sort of searching or not quite what they could be or haven't quite found what they are. Um, you know, if, you're, if your mission, if your kind of role in life is to be free and to, and to become who you are, I, I think, you know, a few of us do it and a few of us do it for like five minutes and then we're off, we're off course again. Um, and I think I try to, well, Imagine writing a fully realized person, character, kind of fully enlightened, kind of like Siddhartha at the end of the Herman Hesse novel. Like if he was like that at the beginning of the novel all the way through, um, you know, it wouldn't be much of a novel. And um, yeah, I think everyone's got to have a little piece of them missing because that's, they've got to, that's what they've got to go find. And that's what, that's what you're reading for. That's a really hard one to answer because I don't know. That's up to the, that's sort of a, a question for readers rather than a question for the writer. I will say that um, I get a lot of emails from Iran um and that's been fairly consistent with this book and as with my last books i sort of have a lot of readers in tehran for some reason um why that would be i haven't really worked out but you know i mean it's so um yeah that's the only kind of way i know the answer to that question because if for instance it my books were especially popular in Maroubra and nowhere else, you know, in a small sort of suburb of Sydney. Um, and then that would tell you that it's, it's so culturally uh, contingent on uh, where it's set that it has no universal value. But I think because at heart, I've kind of, you know, an existentialist. So all my all my concerns that I'm writing about are either um, the problems of existence, which are, you know, that we're, that we're, we have the burden of freedom and that we are, you know, one of the few creatures that are sort of conscious that we are going to die um, and that we, that life is essentially meaningless and we have to kind of make our own meaning. Um, and then the other thing that I write about is human behavior. And you know why we act the way we do, and those things are certainly not contingent on um, on place, and nor I really think on time. Um, so I would say the answer is not at all. <laughs> <laughs>